I'm Mark Silver from Chicago, Illinois. I'm here at the International Academy of Cardiology. And uh, today I discussed the paper on whether or not the DASH diet might be the optimal diet for patients who have symptomatic heart failure. This began with our interest years ago in looking at uh, a simple way to measure endothelial function in heart failure patients. And we did um, looking at large and small arterial compliance. Um, once we validated that, we went on and looked at the ability to supplement with magnesium and the impact on uh, compliance. Um, that really led to a broader look at a broader platform of nutritional supplementation. And we started looking at the DASH diet in patients with heart failure. What I reported on here today was the impact of treating patients with heart failure uh, with either a DASH diet or a traditional diet recommended for heart failure patients. And we looked at the outcomes based on quality of life, six minute walk, and large and small arterial compliance. We also had some measurements of neurohormones. Um, at the end of three months, we noted that walk times were considerably increased in patients who had followed the DASH diet. We also noticed that quality of life was significantly improved. We did notice, however, that there was no change in the arterial compliance, either large or small arterial compliance, at one, two, or three months in these patients. And that's not surprising, and that's been noted as well in patients who'd been treated with a DASH diet for hypertension. We did not have enough power to uh, really evaluate our neurohormonal function and our biomarkers, but there was a, um, a maintenance of a stable low BNP level in the DASH treated patients, whereas the BNP levels went up considerably in the patients who were on the controlled diet. So really what we think is that a DASH diet may be an optimal nutritional platform for patients with heart failure and we're hoping to explore that further.